Hello everyone, I'm of course John Doe, here in my humble abode, and we're going to do another Ghost Letters report. Now, you haven't been aware, the situation with workers at the Fukushima Number 1 Daiichi and the cleanup process and the attempts to control the plant have been very, very deplorable. And recently, there has been efforts to unionize the workers, especially the day laborers who are suffering the most. Uh, they've been very having a big struggle to do this. You can imagine why, given all the uh, situation in Japan, when labor tries to mass organize. Now, recently, uh, the labor union for these workers have made its most bold public move so far. A group of about 100 demonstrators uh, shouted and pumped their fists in the air as they railed against being uh, cheated by contractors hired to find recruits to clean up the shattered site and surrounding areas, as reported by the Japan Times. Uh, they recently gathered in front of the headquarters here in Tokyo of, the, of TEPCO. Now, one worker who declined to, to give his name for obvious reasons, which I'll explain here in just a bit, said that workers at the Fukushima plant have been forced to do unreasonable tasks with no decent safety measures. Uh, all he also said, workers are forced to handle contaminated water in such grim working conditions where any human being should not be put to work. They tend to make easy mistakes under pressure, which, as you can imagine. But it's not they who are at fault. It's the conditions that force them to do terrible tasks. Now, it's very uh, well known here in Japan about what's going on with these workers. Um, often, the, the deal they're offered is not what they get. Uh, contractors offer compensation. Uh, extra daily compensation of 10,000 yen, which is about around $100 extra a day. They're often cheated out of that. Uh, now, how that works is these uh, subcontractors, and we'll get into those guys here in just a second, will charge these workers for uh, daily meals, housing, and such things they need to survive and live. When they do this work, that's a good chance of killing them. So they take the extra money they're getting. So these workers are paid next to nothing at the end of the day. Now, just how bad is it, though? Well, you would imagine that you'd want things to be decent for these workers. But it's the way it's being done. And to enlighten us a bit more about this, we'll look at something that uh, labor activist Steve Zetzer, I think I'm pronouncing his name correctly, uh, discovered when he went into the slums of Osaka and spoke to the president of the Day Laborers Union. He said, one of the things I learned in Osaka from the president of the Day Laborers is that many of the Day Laborers being brought into the plant were not being registered and they're disappearing. There were over 800 <laughs> Day Laborers who have disappeared after contacting the union, which means they may have been killed or died during their work. Zentzer goes on to say, the government is now in control of TEPCO, which they've been for almost two years now, which runs Fukushima plant. And they're allowed to use contract workers through the Yakuza, which has been widely known for a while now here in Japan. So the government is actually in business with the Yakuza, allowing the Yakuza to bring in these workers. And we heard a report that they may not even be registered when they go into the plant. So they're not entitled to health care. And also, when they get sick and overdose, they can't tell anyone because they haven't been registered. So they don't exist, literally. These are also the contract workers at the plant. These workers are basically being sent as cannon fodder. Some of them are not only day laborers, but also migrant workers who are being used as well to clean up the plant. Now, I've done a video before talking about how the homeless are recruited and people are marginalized. 
And this just shows just how poorly these people are being treated. They're doing work that is highly dangerous. It's almost assured they're going to get sick. And it's going to greatly decrease their lifespan. But that doesn't matter. Because the corruption and the greed go so deep that not only the nuclear industry, but in capitalism in general, that these workers are not viewed as human beings. They're viewed as nothing more than money. That's all they see these human beings are, as money, something to be exploited, something to be taken advantage of, all so you can put a bit more yen in your pocket. It's disgusting and unacceptable. But to look at this just a little bit more, because you may not be convinced at this point, we'll look at an article that Jake Alderson wrote, when he, because he's been working with a guy who actually, an re, independent reporter named uh, Mr. Suzuki, who got a job there for a while and infiltrated to find out exactly what was going on. And um, Jake says the following about what Suzuki uh, discovered. Now, Suzuki's reports came out a while back, and he also published a book about this. But Jake gives an interesting um, breakdown, a little summary, of what Suzuki discovered. It says, Suzuki discovered evidence of TEPCO subcontractors paying Yakuza front companies to obtain lucrative construction, construction contracts of money destined for construction work flying into Yakuza accounts. Now, construction contracts mean building plants, maintaining things, and also decontamination work, especially. And of politicians and media being paid to look the other way. More shocking, perhaps, were the conditions he says he found inside the plant. Now, this is where it gets more interesting. His fellow workers found Suzuki, while Motley crew are homeless, chronically unemployed Japanese men and former Yakuza, debtors who owed money to the Yakuza, and the mentally handicapped. Suzuki claims the regular employees at the plant were often given better radiation suits than the Yakuza recruits. Now, TEPCO has admitted there were a shortage of equipment at the plant. The regular employees were allowed to pass through very high-tech radiation monitors, while the temporary laborers, the day laborers, the destitute, the desperate, the marginalized, were simply given hand rods to monitor their radiation exposure. You see, now do you understand just how deep this goes and just how unacceptable it is. There's a mountain of evidence. You have labor activists, labor, labor leaders at times, Saying, look, here's what the workers are telling us. We have very skilled reporters putting their lives at risk to bring clear evidence that Yakuza are connected to all these things, deeply connected. And this corruption is far deep and disgusting. You have labor, day labor unions standing up and rallying and, and speaking very publicly. Saying, here's what's going on. And yet, if you, at this point, if you still want to sit there and say, the nuclear power industry is good, or you want to take the fence-sitting position, that well, I'm not particularly anti-nuclear, but it needs to be safe. You really think it's ever going to be safe with these things going on? Do you ever think this could be cleaned up and somehow made a good industry? Here in Japan, it's clear. Yakuza are a deep-rooted part of Japanese society. They infiltrate all aspects of capitalism in Japan. They're the source of corruption in Japan. You want to get rid of the Yakuza? You want to stop all this corruption. Get rid of capitalism. Put the workers in power. And I assure you, not only will there be no more nuclear power in Japan, but we'll definitely have a more safer form of energy. 
and this type of abuses of workers will no longer be going on. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please share it around. Hope it enlightened you a little bit. And as always, if this is the first time you've seen me, hey, go ahead and click the put a little live link here or something for you and subscribe. And until next time, this is me, of course, John Doe, here in Tokyo. Checking out.